Okay, I think we can go ahead and get started. Some more people might hop on later on, but we can get started with what we have. Um, so this is a webinar format. Hopefully everyone can hear me okay. Um, <laughs> this is a webinar format, meaning only the panelists will have their cameras and microphones unmuted. Everyone else is welcome to use the chat to ask questions or the Q&A feature down at the bottom of your screen. Um, either way, and uh, I think we'll go ahead and introduce ourselves now. Um, my name is Natalie. I use she, her pronouns, and I am a 20-month student on the Welfare of Children and Families pathway. Um, so I'm not in classes right now, but I will graduate next May. And my field placement is at Community Action Network, which is um, a network of um, community centers at low-income housing sites around Ann Arbor. Um, and I do kind of a little bit of everything there. We have a food pantry. We do after-school programs with kids. Uh, we have a summer camp. So it's a little bit of everything. Um, and yeah, so that is me. And I will turn it over to some of our other panelists, whoever wants to go. I can go next. So I'm Hannah. I use she, her, hers pronouns. I am an advanced standing student on the leadership and management pathway. So I started in August 2020 and I will graduate next week. And I've been placed at um, Development Centers, which is a behavioral health outpatient in Detroit. And I've been working within quality improvement in their admin department. And I've been hired by my field placement. So I'm here to say it is possible and been working part-time with them while also having work study and um, doing full-time uh, school. And others can share as well. Hello everyone, my name is Victoria Turner. My pronouns are she, her, hers. And I am in the interpersonal practice pathway in integrated health, mental health and substance use. And similar to Hannah, I'm also getting ready to graduate next week and as an advanced standing student. And I am doing my field placement at Michigan Medicine in the inpatient hospital and adult care management. Hey everybody, my name is Diana. I use she, her pronouns, and I am in the Applied Research and Program Evaluation Pathway. I'm a part-time student. I work full-time for the VA and for U of M doing mental health research, and um, I have not started field placement yet. Um, I did do my undergrad at U of M, and I'm, I've lived in a lot of different places in Ann Arbor and some neighboring areas. Um, so yeah, I think that's all of us. Um, so if we want to go ahead and if anybody has questions, feel free to drop it in the chat or in the Q&A section. And Rosalie is just here to kind of drop links as we talk about them. If... Um, while we wait for questions to roll in, I do actually have a few um, pre-prepared questions. Um, so a lot of students ask about on-campus versus off-campus housing options, and we do have both here at Michigan. Um, I'll actually let Victoria talk a little more about the on-campus housing because she knows more than I do um, living in it. <laughs> um, but I've lived off-campus since, I also went here for undergrad, but I've lived off-campus since my junior year. Um, and I live in an apartment, um, and that um, apartments can be a little pricey in Ann Arbor, I will say that, um, but there are definitely options if you look for them. And yes, Michigan does have a housing website, and I have also made my own spreadsheet, which I can share in the chat. Um, I'll get the link in just a minute. But I made my own spreadsheet of Ann Arbor leasing companies because I'm that's just the kind of person I am. <laughs> and I thought that that was more helpful than the website that the university provides. I think it's a little more comprehensive. Um, but there's a lot of off-campus housing options. Um, some students do live in Arbor, which is a little pricey. Um, but a lot of graduate students actually live in Ypsilanti, which is the town next to Ann Arbor, and that is where Eastern Michigan University is. Um, so it's a little it's a little cheaper, but it's still like a college town. It's just smaller, um, and there's really good like public transportation options. There's uh, bus lines that are free with your University of Michigan student ID. 
Um, the campus buses and the city buses are free to students, so that's a good option. Um, you can also have a car. Um, you'll probably have to pay for a parking pass, but that is also an option that a lot of students choose. And that's very doable because you have a lot of flexibility in scheduling your classes. So it's possible that you only have to come to campus like two or maybe three days a week. Um, so parking could be a little cheaper that way if you choose to do that. Um, I feel like I'm rambling a little bit, so I'm going to turn it over to Victoria and anyone else who wants to add anything. Yes, yeah, so I live in on-campus graduate housing, and there are two different options, one of which is Munger, uh, which is a newer building, and that's where I'm living, and it is on central campus, um, so it's a really convenient location, and as Natalie had mentioned a little bit earlier, it is more on the expensive side, um, but there are benefits and perks to living there of being so close to the School of Social Work and a lot of other um, parts of campus. So it's really easy to, to walk around and um, there are buses around as well to be able to transport you to different parts of campus. Um, and there's a gym within the building and you have your own, you're in a suite. I believe the suites are either like six or seven person suites and you have your own bedroom and bathroom. Uh, and then you share like kitchen and living space, but it is ginormous and there's, there's just so much space and like two of everything. Um, so it's a cool place to live, but it is a little bit pricey. And then there is also, it's Northwood campus, which is on North campus, I believe about a 10 minute or so drive away. And there are, um, I think free campus buses that you can take that can take you from North campus or Northwood to, to central campus. And uh, Northwood, I believe, is a little bit more quiet and like smaller apartments. So I think you can do um, like a single, double or triple and it's more family oriented. So some students will choose to have maybe a few family family members live with them. Um, so those are the two different like on campus graduate housing options. And correct me if I'm wrong, Victoria, but parking is separate, so you don't get a parking spot if you live on campus, but U of M has the option to, um, like every year you can buy parking passes from U of M. They have different levels, so like different types of lots and different colors are more expensive um, depending on like how close they are to the hospital, for example, like for doctors and nurses and hospital staff, um, you can also buy um, parking permits, I believe, from the city of Ann Arbor itself. Um, but something that I've also um, heard people do is um, if you go on Facebook and you just like look up Ann Arbor or Ypsilanti housing, and I typed the word Ypsilanti in the chat if you um, wanted to use to look it up. Um, if you type housing, you'll of course find a bunch of information for like subletting or like finding roommates and things like that, but people, or you can ask, um, people will also sublet like their parking spot. So if they're living off campus and the house they live in, you know, comes with like a driveway, but they don't have a car, um, people will pay money to, you know, park at that house and then walk to class. And there's a ton of housing and residential like areas right next to the School of Social Work that also sometimes have street parking, but sometimes it's kind of hard to count on. So um, if you are looking for very reliable parking and just want like one spot, I would recommend looking into that subletting option. Yeah, so we have a question in the Q&A. Um, do you have neighborhood suggestions for off-campus housing and do many people live in neighboring towns aside from Ann Arbor? Uh, yeah, one of the neighboring towns is Ypsilanti. I think that's probably the most common for students just because it does still have that kind of college town feel, um, but it's a little more affordable than Ann Arbor. Um, neighborhood suggestions in Ann Arbor, Carytown is really cool. Um, someone maybe put that in the chat. Um, Carytown's really cool and it kind of has a little more like mature vibe to it. It's right next to like a farmer's market and it's really close to downtown. Um, so it's a little, I mean, undergraduates still live there, but it's usually upperclassmen and grad students that are in that neighborhood. Um, so that's a really cool place to be. And that's usually houses that are split up into multiple units. So you might have like a house, the upper unit, like the upstairs might be one unit with three or four bedrooms. And then downstairs is another separate apartment. 
Um, so that's a really cool option. I currently live on South campus, like kind of, kind of next to the athletic campus. And that is definitely more of an undergraduate vibe. That's where I've been for the past three years. Um, it can be kind of loud, but it's really cool. It's, it's, I'm like a five minute walk from the big house, which is the football stadium. Um, so that's really fun on game days and stuff. I guess it kind of just depends on what you're looking for, but those are two really good options. So I would say, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, I've been here for a year and I've loved my neighborhood. I live in Bryant Pattengill East is the technical term, but I call it Lower Packard because I live right on Packard Street. Um, but the lower end, not as close to the university, but it's a little bit more affordable. Um, and it is like still close to campus. It's about a 10 minute bike ride to campus. Um, a seven minute drive and a 15 to 20 minute walk from the big house, the stadium. So great for great game days, but not as loud, but like still accessible. And so if you want to still be accessible, but not be like so much in the downtown like area, um, I would suggest that neighborhood. And it's also close to a bunch of neighboring parks and cute neighborhoods with like really pretty houses. Um, local restaurants like neighborhood centered restaurants and like coffee shops and bars and stuff so I've liked having that like distance kind of a little bit and it's more of a young professional graduate student vibe but still so close and I feel like you get downtown very easily um yeah so generally if you're living downtown like in the heart of Ann Arbor that's going to be like where you'll maybe have more difficulty parking and it's going to be a bit more expensive. Um, I did live in Carytown that Natalie spoke about um, like for two years in my undergrad and I really really loved it but um, to give you I mean I'm sure it's more expensive now because it's been a few years but like I paid around $750 a month for a four bedroom um, two bath apartment and we didn't have AC until like it was installed at the very end. One of the bathrooms also wasn't finished until the very end. Um, and there was like two parking spots and I loved it because I didn't have a car so I could walk to campus. I was going to class every day um, in undergrad. But um, once I graduated for the same price, like 750, um, I was able to get an apartment that was like a 10 minute walk away from the stadium, the big house. Um, and it was like two bedroom, two bath with um, like in unit washer, dryer, AC, stuff like that. So I was paying the same amount. Oh, and there was also parking available. But because I didn't need to go to campus because I was working um, at a different place, like in Ann Arbor, I didn't need to, I don't know, like pay the premium to get a little bit of like less of the like amenities, I suppose. And I mean, I would still go downtown pretty frequently and it was like only a five to 10 minute drive. And right now I actually have moved to Ypsilanti pretty recently, um, like in 2021 and um, prices are substantially lower. Like Natalie was describing, like it is still a college town. So there's still a lot of students and um, I don't know, there's really good restaurants and coffee shops and things like that. And again, um, since, especially because of COVID, I'm not really going to campus that often, but even when I do in the fall and the upcoming semesters, it's only about like a 15 to 20 minute drive and 20 minutes is like if it's traffic prime time. Um, but yeah, so I would recommend looking outside of downtown Ann Arbor if you're planning on bringing a car and not planning on being on campus every day. But if you want to be on campus very frequently, if you want to be hanging out downtown a lot, um, then then it would be good to consider downtown options as well. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I know I talked a lot, but I know people have also asked a lot about North Campus. So um, the way that the university is structured, um, the School of Social Work is on central campus and that's by the Diag and kind of probably like the pictures that you typically see of the University of Michigan. Um, but North Campus is where the um, College of Engineering, School of Music, Theater and Dance and um, other colleges are held. Um, that are within the University of Michigan, and they do have housing, um, like Victoria mentioned. Um, there's also off-campus off housing in that area as well, and I know quite a few people in the School of Social Work who live there, and again, it's a lot cheaper than living downtown Ann Arbor, but there's also um, very reliable buses, um, U of M buses that take you from North Campus to Central Campus, like 
pretty much like every 10 minutes and it's a very short bus ride. So if you do not have a car um, and you're going to be relying a lot on public transportation, um, I think North Campus is pretty accessible from Central Campus and vice versa. Definitely agree with that. Um, I'm not seeing any more questions in the chat or Q&A, so I'll go to another one that I had prepared. Um, what are rent prices like and how do students pay their rent? I feel like Diana kind of touched on this a little bit. If I had to guess just based on personal experience and that of my friends, I would say average rent in Ann Arbor might be somewhere around 800. Um, there is a wide range um, I currently pay about five fifty a month, but I share a bedroom. It's a really big bedroom, but I do share a bedroom. Um, <laughs> but, and I also live very close to campus, so that contributes to it as well. Um, I know some of the like luxury high rises in downtown Ann Arbor can definitely get up to like twelve hundred, thirteen hundred. Um, you'll have your own bedroom and bathroom probably, but. Obviously, that is not affordable for everyone. Um, I would say there's a lot of options. Um, and subletting is also very common. Um, and I would say most people that I know have at least a part-time job. I have two part-time jobs. Um, it's very doable, even with classes in field. Um, and I know that's something that a lot of students worry about. But I think most people I know have a job. Um, so I guess that's how we, I guess that's how we pay rent. I don't know if anyone wants to add on to that. Yeah, I would say most people hold at least a work study or two and or a part-time job. And that's how we all tend to pay rent. Um, I'll share that I pay um, six seventy a month and I uh, share a bathroom with my one other roommate. And I live in kind of what Natalie was describing where it's like a house, but it's like a duplex and we're on the top level but we have in-unit washer and dryer, um, free parking right outside our front door. Um, and like I said, it's about a 10 minute uh, bike ride to campus and about a seven minute walk. So it's a little farther away, but uh, it's a really good deal. And like, we love our apartments so much. We have a great landlord. Um, we live in a very nice neighborhood. I feel very safe where I live. Um, so it, it does range and that includes utilities. So 670 with utilities as well. Yeah, I think that you can find a, a lot of different price points um, in Ann Arbor. So yeah, depending on your proximity to campus, um, how many roommates you want to have, um, things like that. Um, something also very random, but I just remembered is I think if you have pets, you can't have you can't bring them into on-campus housing, just something to think about because I've never seriously considered on-campus housing since I was a freshman, only because I had pets. Um, so maybe Victoria can speak more about like the cost of on-campus housing, but um, yeah, for off-campus, like the prices that I see are like 600 to 800 for shared apartments where you have like at least one or two roommates. Um, and again, your proximity to campus, specifically like central campus and the Diag where most of the like uh, undergraduate buildings and the College of Literature, Science and Arts are, but it's also right next to the School of Social Work. That's kind of going to be like the premium. And then, yeah, those luxury high rise apartments are like like a thousand dollars, like a room. So you'll still be sharing a unit with like two to three other people. Um, so it really just depends. Um, I highly recommend looking on Facebook and just Googling Ann Arbor housing, not to say that you'll hundred percent like find something like really easily, but people, I think, especially in the summer, like post a bunch of information about subletting because they want to get out of their lease or different, different things like that. So I definitely recommend that. And then I agree with what everybody said before, just paying for it through, um, part-time jobs and, um, I think people, when they take out their loans, that's also another, uh, like their living expenses is something that they consider. Yeah, I don't know exactly how much it is for Northwood since I don't live there, but in, in Munger, it's about 984, which is quite expensive. Um, you do have a lot of amenities involved and for me, it was, I only, I knew I would be in Ann Arbor only for a year and my dad went to University of Michigan for undergraduate and was like, 
you have to experience living in Ann Arbor. And so um, that was that was something that I was interested in doing and willing to um, pay for it. And it's just so close to campus. So and um, I walk to the hospital and can commute um, regularly. So it has been convenient for me to to be so close to cent- or basically on central campus. Um, but yeah, it's definitely up to students. Cool thing about Munger, too, is that there are graduate students from many different programs within the building. And um, now that some of the restrictions are easing up with the pandemic, uh, they're starting to have more programming again in person. And so there's more opportunities to to meet people from different disciplines, people who are getting their PhD or other master's or um, post pre or post doctoral programs as well. So it's a cool place to meet people who are in the same or different programs than you. Yeah, I'll share. I always like to share this about how I found like my housing um, since we see. Oh, sorry. There is another question we could answer. Are those uh, high rises mostly undergrads? Any perceptions of life in those? I can't speak to that. I have not lived in a high rise. So my only experience um, and like, again, this is just like very personal experience. It's not everybody's experience. So I never lived in an, in a high rise in undergrad. I knew people who did and the, you know, the living situation varied. Like there were, there was um, like one unit that, or not unit, but like one building where like the walls were super thin and it was primarily undergrads. So like people who would have parties, like it would be super loud and they didn't really like living there. So they left. Um like the next year um there's like there was another high rise that people were living in that I knew that it was really really nice and they really liked their roommates um the situation was it was like two bedrooms and a living room with a kitchen but the two bedrooms were split between two people so you were still sharing a room and then each of the bedrooms had their own bathroom so two bed two bath but four people were living there but it was super nice they had their own in unit washer dryer um in my experience it has been primarily undergrads I think it's just because um maybe the priorities of like being really close to campus are a little bit less for people that are coming in for graduate programs and also um people coming in with graduate programs like if you have like maybe more like car payments or like undergrad loans you're paying off or like you have dependents that you're taking care of. Like there are other costs that you have to factor in that makes maybe living in one of those like really nice apartments a little bit less um, like affordable. Um, But they are like always building new apartments and there are like luxury type, like very nice apartments that are not on like the central campus area. So that are like you know, like a five to a 10 minute drive are more on like the perimeter of the downtown Ann Arbor area. I found my apartment on like apartments.com and I did what Natalie did. Like I made a huge spreadsheet when I decided to move, you know, out of the downtown area and into a place, like I was saying, like I was hoping to get more like value for how much I was paying. Um, So yeah. And that apartment that I lived in for like two or three years um, had, you know, the washer dryer and also had like a pool and a gym. So it was really nice. It definitely wasn't like a luxury apartment, but I felt like it was, it was, it was very nice. And that, um, my roommate, um, was a grad, is a graduate student. And then, um, a lot of my neighbors were also graduate students or, um, like people with young children or, um, single people post education, things like that. Yeah, I don't have any personal experience with the high rises, but I think Diana covered a lot of it. I guess it just kind of varies building to building what the experience is like. I'm not seeing any more questions. Um, Maybe we could just kind of talk about Ann Arbor in general and some of our favorite parts of Ann Arbor. Yeah, I was just going to quickly share another great resource to finding housing. I just used the off-campus like housing website on um, University of Michigan's housing page. And I was able to search um, a roommate who already had like 
a house or like an apartment set up, furnished, all that stuff. I just had to furnish my own room, someone who's established in an arbor. And that's what I really wanted. I didn't want to have to find like a bunch of new roommates because I was coming in, didn't know anyone. And I did like the fact that I lived with someone not in the program just so I could kind of have a different perspective. And I wasn't always just focused on like the school social work um, people and everything that goes on in the school social work just to change it up. And so I was lucky enough to get a roommate who had been here for four years in her PhD program. And um, we're now really good friends. And I got a different perspective of the University of Michigan and also Ann Arbor. And that website was incredibly easy. We just emailed through the website and it directly emailed, like it got connected to our actual Gmail accounts and um, made setting up like a little Zoom meeting really easy. And then also just finding everything about the listing, um, pictures, proximity, uh, price, all of that good stuff. So I highly suggest that one as well. And going to Natalie's question about Ann Arbor in general, uh, I do love Ann Arbor. I love my little neighborhood, as I said. I will always plug this, um, that York uh, used to be called Morgan and York is a fun little cute restaurant slash bar that I'm a two minute walk from. So just other perks of not living downtown, you're not you're still not too far from other fun places to check out. Um, and you're walking distance still from plenty of parks, plenty of other restaurants. Um, and so I loved about Ann Arbor. I brought my bike and it's been fun to like bike around to different parks. It's a very bike friendly town and uh, there's lots of trails and just bike lanes on the roads. Anyways, people are used to bikers being around and that's been really fun. A great way to get around. I don't have to pay for parking everywhere I go. Um, Cause when you do go downtown, you have to pay for parking. Um, until 6 p.m. pretty much every day, um, even on the weekends. And then after 6 p.m., it's free, but, and some holidays. But that's just like another option. It's also a very walkable city, um, depending on where you live. But there's, again, there's usually always something in, in every neighborhood that you get to discover, which is fun. My favorite spot that I go to probably at least once a week is the Arboretum, um, which is very close to, it's close to some of the dormitories on campus, as well as the hospital, very close to the Children's Hospital and U University Hospital, where I'm doing my field placement. Um, so I really love to go there. And another place is by like the Huron, well, the, the rivers, and there's a lot of different parks in Ann Arbor. So it's really fun to explore some of the different ones. Um, but one of the other, there's like a trail, I don't know the name of the park, but I'd like to just go and like run or walk by the river, um, on different part within different parts of Ann Arbor. You can also go tubing on the river, the Huron river, which is really fun. A lot of people do that, especially in the summer. Yeah. There's a lot of fun parks. Um, and I personally love downtown. There's a lot of cool, like local businesses, um, and restaurants and fun bars. We have some rooftop bars, which are always fun. Um, and then this summer they have like kind of closed down. I think it's partially a COVID thing, but I think it might stick. They've like closed down Main Street on weekends. So then they have like outdoor seating for all the restaurants. Um, so that's really fun. And also this weekend is the Ann Arbor Art Fair, which is an annual event. It didn't happen last year because of COVID, but it's exciting. And it's one of the best art fairs in the country is what I've heard. Um, I've never been to any others, but I have been to the Ann Arbor one and it's always really fun. It's like all of downtown. There's like stalls set up on all the streets um, and people come from all over the country. And I think the world too, it's really cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, definitely echo what everybody's saying. I love the fact that we get to, I don't know, like live in a town where there's like plenty of restaurants <clears throat> and like local businesses to choose from. But then like also like Victoria was saying, like very easy to get to like the Arboretum. There's also even um, like in the colder months, there's uh, like an indoor botanical garden, basically. That's like super nice. Haven't been there in a while because of the pandemic. Um, but 
Yeah, I I personally really like going to museums and the University of Michigan has like a couple different museums that are free for, for the public. So you don't have to pay. You can bring, you know, your parents, your family, friends, whomever. They don't have to pay. Um, I personally really like the University uh, Museum of Art, which is really, really close to the School of Social Work. Um, we also have a Museum of Natural History that has a planetarium in it. So that's also very nice. Um, If you have the ability to, I would also highly recommend like exploring off campus um, Ann Arbor places. I felt like after I graduated from undergrad, even though I lived in Ann Arbor for four years, it was like a whole new world. And there is, um, you know, public transportation. So you don't necessarily need to have a car to get to different places in like the city of Ann Arbor. Um, And then um, I know we're talking about like Ann Arbor, but also Ypsilanti is like has like nice parks that I like to, well, again, haven't yet, but hoping to soon um, as things, hopefully um, cases continue to stay low, but like going for a picnic at Frog Park, um, a lot of nice coffee shops. I'm very partial to those. Um, And, and also um, a lot of variety and food options. I mean, like, especially for Michigan compared to where I grew up in Michigan and other places that I've been in like the Midwest, like having different like food from different places and like vegan options, different dietary options um, has been really nice. What are some of our favorite restaurants slash grocery stores in and around Ann Arbor? Um, Grocery stores? I always go to Meyer, which is a very Midwestern place, but um, Meyer is my favorite grocery store. We do have like Whole Foods and Kroger, and which is also Midwestern, I think. Um, we have Trader Joe's. I know a lot of people do Trader Joe's. Um, there's a Walmart that's a little farther out um, if you want to get a little cheaper, but I personally go to Meijer. Anyone else? (laughs) There's also Aldi. I go to Aldi for all my grocery store needs. Um, I used to live in a place where Aldi was like 45 minutes to an hour away, but it's 1000% cheaper than any other grocery store in Ann Arbor, but I think actually has like pretty good options. It mostly has basic stuff. Like if you're wanting to cook anything beyond the basics really of American fare, <laughs> you're going to probably need to go to Meyer or Kroger to fill in those gaps. Um, but luckily um, in, um, I think it's Carpenter Road, um, the Aldi that I go to, which is kind of on that lower end of Ann Arbor, closer to Ipsy, basically in Ipsy. Um, there's a Kroger right across the street. There's um, a Target not too far away. There's also a Meyer, all within the same distance. So like you can go to all your grocery stores if you need to get different ingredients or different things. Um, also make a Target run or something. And um, all the grocery stores are pretty good uh, here. You'll definitely like find people who have a favorite or obviously just like local to where they live. But there are, yeah, two Meyers um, on different ends, two Aldi's. Uh, so you can always find one that's hopefully close by. Um, there's also like some fun, like little farm stands. Like we said, there's the farmer's market every Saturday. There's also Argus farm stop, which is like a little, um, cute kind of farmer's market esque. definitely more expensive, but if you want to get some fresh food, um, or fresh produce, uh, during the week when the farmer's market is not happening, that's always, um, a fun option as well. Yeah, I really like to go to Trader Joe's when I can, especially because I personally felt like they did a really great job during the pandemic, Um, like, uh, I don't know, like maintaining distance. Um, So I really liked it. It does get super busy in on the weekends and the parking lot is not great, I'll admit. But um, for in terms of convenience, if you are living really close to campus, um, there is a Kroger on North Campus. Um, So again, those buses are like, run very, very regularly. So I know a lot of people will go to Kroger, especially if they don't have a car, just hopping on the bus. I believe 
it'll be ready by the time the new class comes to campus. Maybe not, but it'll probably be ready sometime when you are um, in the program, but they are building a target underneath one of the theaters downtown. So like right downtown, there are actually two like local Michigan and um, can't think of the Michigan theater and the state theater. And they play like uh, more like indie films, I guess, usually. Um, but yeah, underneath one is going to be like a big target that I think they're intending to like put grocery stuff in there for convenience for students. And there's also a Walgreens and a CVS right next to um, the Diag on Central Campus, about like a five to 10 minute walk from the School of Social Work if you need to pick up prescriptions. There's also, um, if people want specifically recommendations on like Asian supermarkets, because I didn't when growing up, I had to like drive very, very far away for it. So having a lot of options has been super nice. Um, I'm going to type some restaurant recommendations in the chat. Um, but yeah, also, yeah, uh, I really like the um, like farmer's market and the farm stands when I'm able to go. I had no idea about that downtown Target, Diana. That's cool. <laughs> um, one of my favorite Ann Arbor restaurants, I guess it's technically a chain, but it's like a very small chain. It's called No Thai. Um, I don't, I've had Thai food in other places and I don't know if this is really like authentic Thai, but it's really, really good <laughs> in my opinion and it's pretty affordable. Um, but that's one of my kind of staples around Ann Arbor. So there's another question about um, finding pet friendly housing options. So um, when I was like on apartments.com and I like filtered like pet friendly, it wasn't hard for me to, I specifically have a cat um, or I have two cats that are like, I was about to say like medium size, but like, I guess they don't make cats super big that I know of. Um, so I personally, I feel like didn't have, I had like plenty of options to choose from. To be honest, in undergrad in Carytown, I did not tell my landlord that I had a cat. They never found out. <laughs> so I wasn't supposed to. Um, and I feel like that's kind of similar to how some of like some other friends that I had in undergrad did it, but there are like legitimate pet friendly options downtown like I promise um and you I do recommend being responsible <laughs> and telling your landlord about it um if you can um I do know that you know unfortunately there are, it can be hard to find housing for like very large dogs or um like certain breeds of dogs which is super unfortunate gets me really worked up but um you can you can filter options and that is usually like one of the most readily available information that apartment complexes or landlords will provide. Cause like, you know, they either want to market themselves to be like, we're pet friendly um, or, or they might, you know, like be very strict about it. I will say um, in Ypsilanti, you know, I have had more options with housing with like being able to have a house with a fenced yard. So even though I don't have a dog, like I know in the future I can, and having a pet, having a dog in Ann Arbor, like there are apartment complexes that have dog parks inside of them. Like that was the one that I lived in. I'll just type the apartment complex that I lived in because even though I don't live there anymore, I really did enjoy it and it was pet friendly and I don't think there was breed restrictions. Um, so yeah. And if you, um, in general for like Ann Arbor information, housing information, restaurant recommendations, things like that, there is an Ann Arbor subreddit. Um, that people, if you like just search in the Reddit, like people have probably asked these questions before, so you can see, or you can post your own questions. Um, I know not everybody uses Reddit, but if you do a Google search and you just see, um, that might be helpful too for specific recommendations. I know a lot of places also charge like pet rent. Um, so that's like, they might not be pet friendly in the sense that you can have a pet like whenever, but you might just get charged a pet fee or sometimes I think they just charge you up front like a flat fee um, kind of just depends on the place. But I have my apartment does not allow pets, but if you have an emotional support animal that is free, they're not they're not technically pets. 
So um, landlords and leasing companies are not allowed to like charge you if you have an emotional support animal. Um, so that's also something to keep in mind. I would say too that in my experience living in like the duplex house situation, both of the units, we have a cat and the people downstairs have a dog. So like, I feel like in those situations, when it's like more of like a local landlord, they're more willing to work that out and um, offer it like at least or at most one pet, or I guess at least, I don't know. I think if you want to, if you really are um, hoping to bring your pet, I would look into other options that aren't like those apartment complexes as well. Somebody asked in the Q&A um, coffee shop recommendations. So Hannah and I dropped a couple. There's like a lot of coffee shops and there's always more um, being made. So yeah, some of the ones just like for purposes of the recording and if people don't have their chat available. So in Ann Arbor, there's Lab, there's Ruse Roast, Vertex, Drip House. In Ypsilanti, there's Cultivate, Cross Street Coffee, Hyperion. Um, I mean, there's probably even more places that I haven't tried yet that I would love to try that are very good. Um, but yeah, those are uh, those are good options. And there's also like a, a pretty large Starbucks, like right right across the street from the future Target that, um, you know, if you're going to meet up with like a couple people on a group project, free Wi-Fi, restroom available. <laughs> um, and then there is also like a local it's getting bigger, but a local like chain that I actually used to be a barista at an undergrad um, called Sweetwaters and that they have locations like all around Ann Arbor and um, Ypsilanti and then like just Southeast Michigan now, I think. I'll also say that um, Black Diesel is right by my house and I can walk to it. They offer printing. You have to pay for it, but like I don't have a printer. And I have not had to print anything in like two years, but I had to, to like send in my social work licensure application. And so got to just go there and use their printers because like the libraries like weren't open. And so uh, I would recommend that. They also have free Wi-Fi um, and it's, you don't even have to ask them. It's like just public free. Um, and I'll also plug, Ann Arbor has amazing pop-up shops and uh, food trucks. So York, which is the like wine bar, like restaurant I plugged, they have at least one or two uh, pop-ups, whether that be art or food or drinks or dessert or food, anything like at least one or two between Thursday and Sunday like, throughout the day. So there's always like rotating things. I think that became really popular within the pandemic because obviously real estate was like more expensive and then it was just harder to maintain. So yeah, the summertime uh, pop-up shops, pop-up shops, there's also like pizza replicator and basil babes. And they're like fun pop-up shops that now like help each other out and like build collab and like show up at Cultivate or show up at Roost Roast. And like you follow them on Instagram and like see where they're going to show up and get like a pizza for like 15 bucks. That's like the best pizza you've ever had in your entire life. And it's like, feels like you discovered it because it's just a pop-up shop and it's only like one night only or something like that. So that's been my favorite thing is like following all their Instagram pages, figuring out where they're going to be, seeing if they're going to do any collabs. Like that's been pretty fun this summer. Yeah, that reminded me, I, I don't know if they've quite gotten back to doing it this summer, but I expect it should hopefully be around next summer. But um, the farmer's market, I believe on Wednesday evenings, like once a month in the summer, they have a food truck rally and you can find like the events on Facebook and stuff and get reminders about when they're going to happen. But so good, like so many different options, including like, you know, different cuisines. There's even like a vegan diner-ish option, like for milkshakes and burgers, which is really cool. So um, that's really nice. Does anyone have any last minute questions or recommendations? In the Q&A, um, coming from an area with somewhat warm weather, how much should I prepare for the colder months in terms of clothing slash, slash bike usability? Um, <laughs> 
this is not helpful, but it kind of depends. Like this past winter was really not bad. We didn't get a ton of snow, um, but I would say prepare for snow. Just, you know, Michigan being surrounded by lakes, we usually do get quite a bit of snow and it's pretty windy. Um, so it does, it gets to feel colder than it actually is. Um, the snow doesn't usually stick for too long, but there's always kind of like slush everywhere, which is like not the pretty part of winter. Um, <laughs> but they're good about plowing roads and on campus, it's usually good. Um, the sidewalks and stuff. Um, I don't know if anyone else wants to, I haven't had a bike. So if anyone else wants to speak to that. Yeah, global warming is here and it's staying and it's going to get worse. Um, so I biked straight up until like Thanksgiving this year. And I had like 40 to 50 degree days that the sun was out. I felt very comfortable just put on some like light gloves and like a sweatshirt and it was fine. And it didn't snow until like Thanksgiving this year. And it was pretty light and then it was done. And then we only got like one dumping and it lasted like maybe a couple days because then the sun came out and melted it all. Um, so definitely get a good coat, like, and boots. Cause it's going to get wet and like gross, like that way kind of. Um, but it's still very nice. You can still go out, you can still do things. You're just going to be wearing boots and your, and your big parka. Um, but don't like spend too much money on either of those. Um, go to like a thrift store or Goodwill or, you know, Facebook marketplace for someone leaving Ann Arbor who needs to sell their boots and their parka. But um, yeah, definitely have those things. Definitely agree with that. Um, do you mostly use campus gym or others in the neighborhoods if not close to campus? Um, so the, the on-campus gyms are free to students as long as you're taking classes. So I cannot use the gym right now because I'm not taking summer classes. Um, I mean, I could use it, but I'd have to pay for it. So I don't do that. <laughs> Um, I don't use the gym frequently anyway, so other people might have better recommendations, but on-campus ones are free to students. Uh, yeah, that question reminded me that gyms exist because I haven't been to one in like a year or I don't know, however long we've been in this, but, um, yeah, so a lot of apartment complexes will have their own gyms. So when I moved into the one that I mentioned earlier, there was a gym that I could use. Um, I also have had like a planet fitness membership, which is like $10 a month. And that is about like a five to 10 minute drive from central campus. And there's also like buses that regularly go around in that area as well. Um, an app that I really like is called class pass and I'll put it um, in the chat and they usually have like different promotional deals going on. I've only honestly ever used it during a promotion where I got like a free month or something, but especially after like new year's and stuff, um, the, what it does it is it gives you like a set amount of credits basically that you can use at different classes at local gyms or local yoga studios and things like that. So if you really like to do yoga or bar and Pilates or spinning or so many different things, like there's a bunch of studios in Ann Arbor that offer that. Um, and usually they also, if you know you like a certain place and you just want to go there, they usually offer like student discounts as well. Um, but class pass has been a really affordable way to just like try a lot of different things, but the gyms themselves, it is an extra fee, but it is substantially cheaper than, um, like a lot of like specific businesses, but, um, the gyms themselves at U of M, they offer classes for like a set fee per semester that you can go to as well. I'm not sure if they're fully offering that yet again right now, but, um, I, I can find the link for the gyms <clears throat> and see. I also just found out recently that, like Diana said, if you like going to classes or like bars specifically, that bar code, and I'll put that in the chat, which is up near North Campus, um, they actually offer this thing where you can be like a customer support staff or whatever. And you literally just like sign people in and set up the studio and then like de-set it up. Like I can't think of words right now, but clean it up afterwards really easily. Um, and you get free classes. Like 
you just do that a couple times a week. And then you also get free classes a couple times a week. So I've been interested in checking that out. And you can also audit their classes, like up to three classes before, if you just want to check it out to see if you like it. Um, and they have a bunch of different locations around uh, Southeast Michigan, but they have one in Ann Arbor and it's yeah up by North Campus. Yeah, so I'm going to drop a link for the, um, it's like the recreational sports website. So U of M does have its own rec sports teams that you can join as well. Um, but that's a link to the different facilities on campus that, um, you know, those rec sports are held at, but you can also go just individually to work out. Well, thank you everyone for joining. Um, hopefully this was helpful. Um, if there's any last minute questions, go ahead. But I will just plug next Wednesday at six. We have one more of these Ask a Current Student webinars and that one's gonna be focused on field. Um, so if you have questions about field, hop on to that. That will also be recorded. Yeah, and I just dropped my email in the chat. If people have any follow-up questions, something that they remember later to ask, feel free to email us.